Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It's Hannah B here and today I wanted to go over script writing but I thought that it would be best to do a little recap on plays, drama and the theatre and then we can also go on to Scottish theatre as well, do a wee recap on that and talk about the importance of that within literature in Scotland before moving on to write our own scripts. So first of all I'm going to talk a little bit about plays and drama. In this slide you'll see that I've asked to think about why drama and theatre are important forms and ways of telling a story. If you can think for me about what your favourite play is, then keep that in your mind, and then begin to think about why it works as a play more than it works as a novel or a book. For example, my favourite play is The Tempest, which is a play by Shakespeare, and I think that this works so well on the stage because it really helps the story come alive, and the words and underlying meanings behind what the characters are saying is really felt through their performance. So when we are reading plays, they are written to be both read on the page as literature, as well as to be enjoyed as a live performance. Since they usually take around two to three hours to be performed on stage, they must be well developed while using far fewer words than a novel to tell their story. This means that reading a play is quite different from reading a short story or a novel and requires extra skills of the reader. With little description and only the playwright's stage directions as clues, it's up to you as a reader to imagine the setting, the main characters and the action. Since a play consists mostly of dialogue, you must provide the voices yourself and determine in your mind how each character sounds. But in my opinion, this is what makes reading plays fun because we can all interpret the story in our own way and the characters differently and use our imagination to make them come to life. So why are plays important, you might ask. Plays are important because reading or watching a performance allows you to see a story played out in real time before your eyes and the stories of your imagination come to life. Some of the best literature available to us comes in the form of plays. So if you could think of Shakespeare, whose work has existed for over 400 years and is still performed to huge crowds all over the world today. People say that plays can often be a mirror or a reflection of society and can take political, social and economical trends or topics currently happening and turn them into a story for dramatic effect. This is common of a lot of Shakespeare's work. So how do we read plays then? There's no one way to read a play, however I would say the best way to read a play is in a group, with each person choosing a character and reading aloud. As they're made up mostly of dialogue, which is conversation between the speakers, or monologue, which is conversations the characters can have with themselves, it is a good idea to get an idea of the action taking place in order to visualise it and see it carried out in front of you. Lots of famous and well-known plays use Old English, which is an archaic version of the dialect that we speak today. With older texts like Shakespeare, a modern translation is almost always available to help you understand the words that we may be unsure of. An important tip when you're reading plays would be to pay attention to the stage directions. These may seem like unimportant notes hidden in between the dialogue, but they can tell a lot about the story that you're reading. They are instructions written in the script of a play that give direction to the actors or information about the scenery. For example, we have an example on the slide here. Jim is looking through his bag. Eddie comes up and pushes him. Jim says angrily, what do you think you're doing? Eddie says, oh, sorry, did I hurt you? I was just wondering what you had in that bag. So if you can see, Jim, his character has a direction to look through his bag. Eddie's character has the direction to go up to Jim and push him, and then Jim responds angrily. So these stage directions inform our characters of the action that they're supposed to be taking and potentially the emotion that they're supposed to be portraying as well in their character and their performance. So when we talk about plays, there's lots and lots of different types of plays and theatre, and I'll maybe go into some that are most commonly used and that you might be aware of already. So, the first one is musical theatre, and musicals are plays that are performed in completely song and dance form, and they were made immensely popular by London's West End to New York's Broadway Theatre. So you might know musical theatre 
from things like Matilda or Grease or Hairspray. Another type of theatre could be fringe theatre, which is a form of theatre that is experimental in style and narrative, is usually performed as a low-scale play with very little expense going into stage decor, technical qualities and production value. You'll probably know this from the Edinburgh Fringe, which takes place every year in the capital city of Scotland, in Edinburgh. The best thing about Fringe Theatre is usually the performances of the actors, who tell incredible stories through their performance without, without relying on external or decorative techniques to aid them. And I would definitely recommend that you visit the Fringe Theatre when we can. Another type of play is tragedy, and this is based on human suffering and emotionally painful events. These plays have evolved from Greek tragedy, plays that focus on a single theme and plot, and to its present day form, which tackles multiple themes, storylines and subplots. Some examples of Shakespeare's tragedy, tragedies are Macbeth, Othello and Romeo and Juliet. And another type of play that we can go into is solo theatre, and this is led by only one actor, and there will only be one actor on stage. These could be anything from comic arts to theatrical representations of poetry and stories. This style of theatre stems from the rich and ancient history of oral storytelling, present in almost every culture for a thousand years, where people gather around one person who enacts out the whole story, which often includes multiple characters. What makes this type of theatre so interesting is that the sole actor has to ensure the audience does not get bored, so constantly performing and bringing layers, different layers to their performance. So that's just a couple of the different types of theatre that we've gone through. I'll go through some more next week, but for now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Scottish theatre and we can go into some of the most famous Scottish plays and the context they have within Scottish literature.